Hello, so when we started learning about uh, machine learning, the first kind of problem we talked about was regression. And after we learned about regression, we learned about some of the linear algebra underlying it. And now we're going to be moving on to a second kind of machine learning problem, which is classification. And, and so I just want to review the main categories of machine learning. Um, there's three main categories. Some people will say four. Uh, but there's reinforcement learning, um, which is about these multi-stage decisions. We're not doing that in 320. We're really interested in supervised machine learning, which is where we're trying to make some sort of prediction about uh, maybe the future or about some other unknown. And then there's unsupervised, where there's no particular thing that we're trying to predict, but we're looking for some sort of patterns or simplicity within the data. Um, we've been learning about regression, which is where we want to predict a quantity. And so we're going to be learning about the other um, most common kind of um, supervised machine learning, which is, well, how do we predict a category? And that's called classification. So just to review these, the two differences, um, here I have a big data frame. And all of these things here are features. And among these features, I have a mix of both um, uh, quantities and categories. And that's not really relevant looking at my features to figure out what kind of problem this is. When I want to think about what kind of problem it, I'm dealing with, I'll look at this label. What am I trying to predict? Is that quantitative or categorical? In this case, it's quantitative, so this is a regression problem. And so what will we do? I might have some data up here where, um, where both my features and my labels are known, and so I'll fit a model to that, and then I'll use that same model to predict uh, perhaps where that label is um, unknown. Or I might pretend it's unknown so I can uh, basically test the effectiveness of my model if that's some sort of test data set. A classification problem looks very similar. Again, I might have some mix of, um, of quantities or categories as my features. Um, the main difference now is that I have a, a categorical um, Y or label column. Otherwise, I'm still going to be fitting my features to my label and then trying to do some sort of prediction on it. So um, as I've mentioned, right, we have these four big categories and uh, and sklearn has so many different algorithms for each of them or implementations for each of them and so the one we've learned so far is linear regression that's what we've been using for um, regression so a linear regression model is what we call a regressor um, very confusingly what we're going to be learning now is called a logistic regression and it is not a regression it's actually a classifier right so the name says linear regression but it's classifier so don't get confused, right? Even though we're learning linear regression and logistic regression, I am teaching you a, reg a regression model and then also a classification model. So I'm gonna exit out of here and head over to my notebook to try to introduce this. And let me see here. Here's my notebook. I have some stuff imported. Maybe I'll come back to that later. Um, let me just jump down here for now. Um, I have this data frame which has some data from a very um, famous machine learning data set called the IRIS data set. The idea of the IRIS data set is that you have all these measurements about um, iris flowers. So for example, um, what is the size of the petals? Uh, what is the length or width of the sepals, which are, the, I guess, like the green leaves between the petals? Um, there are different varieties of, um, of irises. So I put the varieties here in this far right column. This whole thing I'm looking at right now is a, is a test data set, and it only has 10 samples in it, um, which is tiny, right? Normally we'd have a much larger um, test data set, but I'm just trying to keep it small and simple um, in this case. I'm passing in this random state so that even though it's um, uh, somewhat random, I mean, every time I run it, it'll be the same. If I put a different number here, I would get a different random, and I'm using random kind of carefully. Uh, order each time. So this is just so I can reproduce it even though I want something basically random. I want random but reproducible. So I've done that train test split and I'm just putting 10 here. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, fitting different models to the training data and then uh, just seeing how they act with this very small um, test data set. And um, looking at this, there are three features I'm going to be interested in. Uh, we're going to look at the dimensions of the sepals. And then I have this constant column. Um, remember that sometimes when you have these models, you could have coefficients in a separate intercept, or you could just have coefficients, and then the last coefficient could be multiplying the one column. And that's what I'm doing here. I think I'll make the later examples a little bit simpler. Those are my features. 
Um, I actually have multiple Y columns here. I'm going to try to see if I can predict different things over here. Can I predict what the petal width is? And I predict whether or not a particular variety um, is a setosa. Um, there's actually three varieties um, in general, so can I just predict any variety? You can see that whenever I have a setosa here, uh, it's true. For other cases, it's false, right? It's not a setosa. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if I can predict these three different columns based on these three different features. I guess it's really like two features. And so there's four things we're going to do. We're going to do a regression uh, on the pedal width, and that's really just kind of review. Uh, we're going to do a binary classification uh, on the Satosa column. And so we're going to try to predict whether it's true or false. Binary means two, and, and so that's why um, there's just two things here. Oh, it's either true or false. Uh, I'm going to use that same model to not just tell me whether it's true or, true or false, but I'm going to ask the model um, for some sort of probability uh, that it's true and probability that it's false. Um, rather than just saying, hey, it's true, I'd like to see something like, oh, there's a 95% chance it's true. And, and then finally, so multi binary means two, multi-class means, um, uh, I guess, more than two. And so we're going to do that over here, right? You can see I have three different categories here, and things get a little bit more complicated in that situation. Okay, so I'm going to head down here, and I am going to first just start with a regression. And so I'm going to say regression equals linear regression. This is just review from before. And I have all these options in here. And this fit intercept one is something I'm actually going to turn to be false. So fit intercept equals false. What, what this normally does, if it's true, is it would add this ones column um, for me effectively. When I'm saying uh, false, because, well, I've already done that manually. And that just is going to make my example a little cleaner later on. So I have this thing, and I want to fit it to some data. So I'm going to say uh, uh, regression.fit. And when I fit, what do I do? I have my x and my y. And then after that, I could do uh, regression.predict uh, on maybe some other x's. And then that would return a y, right? So I'd have something like this. Maybe I'll say like y, y2, and x2. So in my particular example, I have my training and test data. And so uh, what am I trying to predict right now? I'm trying to predict the pedal width. Right? So I'm going to copy this column name, and I am going to, when I'm um, doing my uh, when I'm doing my fitting, I'm going to pull that out of my training data. Right? So I'm going to put that in here in quotes. That's my y. And then, then my x, well, it will be um, it will be again my training data, and then I have to have like some columns here. I guess a list of columns. And so I actually already created that right here. I have these x columns. Those are the sepal length, sepal width, and then constant. And so this will be my list that I put inside of here. And so I'll basically get those three columns. Let me just so um, if anybody's having trouble visualizing it, I'm, I'm getting just those three columns out of my bigger, bigger one. Whereas when I'm doing this, I'm going to get a pandas series that contains that uh, petal width column. So I'm trying to predict this based on, on these three things. Okay, so I'm doing that, and now I want to do some predictions down here, and, and that's going to be the same, right? I'm going to put in um, x that's basically the same format, except now I'm going to use my test data, and, and maybe rather than capture that in a variable, I'll just see what it looks like for now. So these are my predictions for what should go in this uh, pedal width column. And, and so if I wanted to, I could maybe even add those into my training data frame, my test data frame, and I could say my prediction um, equals that. And then I could look at my test data frame. And the thing that it's complaining about is that I'm trying to add some values to a slice of another, um, of another data set. So when I did this here, right, it's, these are slices of the rows inside of my big data frame. And so it gets confused when I'm trying to add columns to one of these. That's not in the original. So it's actually an easy thing to fix. I could just say like test equals test.copy, and then test will be completely detached from my data frame, and I can add columns to it uh, without complaint. So let me let me run that. And now I can see I have this prediction column over here. And, and I could go through and see how these predictions are. So I predict 1.3, it's actually 1.2. I predict 1.59, actually 1.4. Um, and so I can see sometimes the predictions are good and sometimes they're, well, not so great. 
anyway, that's a regression. Um, let me, and so that was this part one here, let, let me go on and, and try this next piece. I want to do a binary classification on this column right here. And so the code is actually going to be very similar to before. I'm going to head down here. I'm going to change a few things. First off, I want to have a logistic regression. And remember, uh, it is a classifier despite the name, right? So I can deal with a category like this. And then for my Y, I'm going to just have the Satosa column. Is it a Satosa variety or is it not? And so I'm doing that. I may also rename this just so we remember it's a classifier. I'm going to call it CLS. And then um, down here I also need CLS. And I do that. And now I can see my predictions here. I can see that this column is telling me what the flower actually is. And this column over here is telling me what the model predicts it is. And actually, I guess um, uh, we're doing quite well here, right? Every one of our predictions. Um, is completely accurate, uh, which is great. All right, let me let me go back up here to the different things we want to do. So we did the regression using linear regression. We did the binary classification using logistic regression. And, and then basically saying, well, do I have a true or false? Now what I'd actually like to do is know, well, what is the probability of getting um, a true? And so I can do that like this. I can say, um, uh, this has an extra function. It's very similar to the predict, but it'll be like this. It'll be um, predict probability A, and I'm going to get a NumPy array of all the probabilities. And so what this means is the way I'd interpret this is that there's a 94% chance of false and a 5% chance of true, and that's why it ultimately reduced that to a false. 97.9% uh, chance of false and, and only a 2% chance of true. That's why I get another false. Let me look at this one. This one had a, a 90, about 93% chance of being true, which is why I have true, um, true there. And, and so I could even, if I wanted to, I could try to pull out that last column. I could say something like, I want to have some sort of slicing where I have like a row slice and then a column slice when I'm doing this. I want all the rows and, uh, and I want that second column. These are just the probabilities of it being true. And so if I wanted to, I could say something like test, um, test of probability equals that. And then I could look at it again. And, um, and I can kind of see in each case, well, based on these dimensions, uh, what probability does the model think it has of being a Satosa? Um, and, and so sometimes it's not quite sure, right? I could, based on this, I could identify the cases where the model uh, was not very confident and then I could identify other cases while where it was quite obvious um, what it was. So I don't have to do a new model for that. I just have to call predict probability A instead of predict. And um, okay, so let me head up here and we're gonna do this last piece now. Um, how can I do a multi-class classification uh, on variety? And variety is a little bit trickier because I have three different categories there. Um, I, I guess it's going to be trickier when we actually get into the math behind it, but it is not trickier in terms of um, it is not trickier in terms of uh, actually running the code. So if I actually copy this here, um, and then I head down here, I'm just going to call this uh, multi, so I can remember my three different models. Then I say multi, and um, and then what else do I need to change? I'm doing a different column this time. And so I can do that. And now, now what? It's going to tell me for my predictions. Um, I see my, it's saying my predictions are still uh, false and true. And that came from here. And so this is returning true and false because, well, my new model is called multi and I'm using my old model. I'm going to do that. And now I can uh, see while we're writing that, I can see, well, what does it predict for this one? That one it got right, that one it got right. Here it actually made a mistake, right? Um, models make mistakes. That's not, that's not surprising. I guess that was the only mistake in this data set. And then, of course, this probability column was from earlier, right? So I'm just going to ignore that um, because I keep on writing this probability um, or this prediction column for each of my um, four examples. Okay, so there we've seen a few different things, right? We've seen a regression, and then we've seen these two different kinds of classifications. Um, let's try to get into the... Um, 
let's try to get into the linear algebra behind each of these examples. And so I'm gonna head down here and remember that I had REG, that was my uh, model earlier. And, um, and inside of here I have coefficient and I also have intercept. And the intercept is zero because earlier what happened, I passed in that intercept equals false to all of these. Uh, if I had not done that, then what would have happened? Then my coefficients, I only had these two columns here, or two numbers here, corresponding to the weights on these two columns. And then instead of this being uh, basically my intercept, that would have gone to the separate variable down here, instead of being here. So basically, these are my weights on my real columns. And then this is the, the intercept, or the weight on my ones column. Okay, so I have that thing. And what I'd like to do is uh, reshape it so that it can be, um, I want it to be however many rows necessary and then one column. So it'll be vertical like that. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to get my x data, which will be my, um, will be my uh, test data frame. And then it'll be those x columns. And maybe I'll say um, dot values. And so I'll look at that. So I'm pulling those first three columns out of here. Okay, so I have three columns here, and then the column over here is basically three entries in it. And so if I wanted to, I could take the dot product of this with these down, down here. And that's exactly how um, a linear regression does predictions. So if I come down here, so I can say define a reg, um, a regression uh, predict, and if I have some x values here, what I could do is I could return uh, x dot, uh, basically these things, right? So I could say, um, maybe I'll call this like vector one, or I'll, I'll call it coefficient. Uh, you know what, I'm just gonna actually, why not just put it here directly? I don't need a separate variable for that. And so I'm gonna look at this regression predict, and I'm gonna do it on my x data, and I get these predictions, um, 1.32, 1.59, let me actually um, draw up here earlier, and I see that those are exactly the predictions that my linear regression made earlier, 1.32, 1.59, right? So this um, regular uh, regression dot predict, like this, all it's doing is this right here. It's doing this, this math right like this. Okay, let's try to see what the logistic regression is doing. So it's actually going to be very similar. So remember before, what was I doing? I was saying uh, CLS, my classifier dot predict, and, um, and I can just do that. These were the values I was getting out of my classifier. What math is this doing? It's actually almost identical to this. Let me copy this. In fact, I'm just trying to tweak it very slightly. I'm going to have my uh, CLS predict, and then I'm going to say CLS, uh, predict and my x data and um, and the difference right I have these all these numbers now and, and actually sorry <laughs> I want my coefficients from my other one so my CLS coefficients I should look at those as well before I jump into this I may have different coefficients I'm like oh why are all the numbers the same that doesn't make sense and I get all these numbers and, and remember, our goal is to predict false, false, or true, or things like that. And, and so the way it works is that we're getting a score for each entry, and if the score is greater than zero, uh, we predict true, otherwise we pr predict false. And so the shape is a little bit different here. Maybe I can just reshape so that's more obvious. Uh, but otherwise, that's what it's doing. All these numbers up here are the same, same down here. And, and, and I think maybe this is why they... Um, Maybe they even call this logistic regression, even though uh, it's a classifier. The math is basically identical to um, what we have for a linear regression, right? The, at the heart of it, we're just doing a dot product. The only difference between the linear regression that we did before and the, the logistic regression we're doing now is we're just checking if some number is greater than zero. Okay, so let's do this next piece, right? So the next piece was I'm kind of going back through my examples before. Um, after we 
um, did predict, which was trying to say, well, are we predicting true or false? We wanted to get this probability. What is the probability that's a satosa? And so how can we get a probability out of this? If I head back down here, you actually see that before I added this um, greater than, I had a numeric score. So I'm going to go back to that. And I'm going to say I want to predict probability A now. I'm just going to go back to this. And um, predict my probability. And I'm going to do that. And I see I have all these scores. And of course, these are not probabilities because a probability would be between 0 and 1. But it turns out there's a very simple function that can turn it into a probability. And that function is called the sigmoid function. And I had it at the beginning of the, the notebook, but I haven't talked about it yet. So I'm just going to head up briefly, and we're going to talk about the sigmoid function and how we're going to use it. We don't have to go into a lot of the details on the math. I don't care if you remember that. I certainly don't remember it. The important thing for it is that the x value that's going in can be as large or as small as we want. But if I, if I get very, very negative numbers, I effectively approach 0. And if I get very large numbers, I effectively uh, approach 1. So the nice thing is that I could take any sort of numeric score in, and it's going to give me back a result between 0 and 1. So basically, I can take some other sort of score and turn it into something that at least looks like a probability. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this sigmoid function down here. Right? And so instead of having all these numbers like negative 2.76 or, or 2.57, I'm just going to take the sigmoid of all of those things, and then they will be uh, these numbers all between 0 and 1. And it turns out that that's how we were, um, would actually be doing the probabilities. Right? So just like before, I was trying to say, well, predict, um, uh, predict the category on x uh, the same way down here. If I, um, maybe I'll do this. Uh, right here above, I'm going to say predict the probability of A. Let, let me just look at what's happening here. These numbers right here, which is the probability of it being true, is this column right here, the probability of it being true. Um, the way I've written this code, I'm not computing the probability of it being false because, well, that's boring, right? I mean, they add up to 1, so why would I do both of them? But you can see these numbers here are exactly identical this down here, right? So again, the probability is very simple, right? I'm, I'm still just doing that core um, dot product, and then I'm just applying the sigmoid to every number um, inside of the, the result, right? So we've seen for all these cases so far, this dot product is just extremely important, right? I'm taking the dot product of a matrix uh, with a vertical vector. Let me go up and talk about the fourth model we did with a multi-class model. Uh, the multi-class model uh, was right here, and I was trying to predict variety. And variety um, could be any one of these three things. And what it's going to turn out is that my coefficients for variety um, are going to be a lot more complicated. So if I look at, so this is my binary one. If I look at the coefficients for my binary one, I just have these three numbers. But if I look at my coefficients for my uh, multi-class regression, I actually have not a vector, but a whole matrix with all of these, all of these numbers in it, and um, and so uh, let me um, let me uh, use these now. And what we're going to do is actually, I think, just like the way they set it up, we're going to have to transpose them. We're going to do that, and let me let me grab this here. It's going to be very similar again, but. Instead of multiplying x by just a vertical vector, I am going to multiply it by this whole thing right here. We multiply it by that whole thing, and then I get this result. And so I'm going to just call this quickly. I'm sorry, this is multi-predict now. Multi-predict. And I'm going to call that multi-predict of x. And I'm actually not doing a sigmoid anymore at this point. My apologies. And so how do I interpret this? Basically, um, every one of these columns corresponds to one of the three varieties. If I had had more varieties, I would have had more columns up here, but I would have still had three rows in this coefficient matrix. Right, so you might imagine, I don't know if, which one is which, but you might imagine that this is the, the Satosa variety. 
And it turns out when I take my big matrix of data and I multiply it by all of these columns right here, what it really does is it throws column by column. It takes this column times my data matrix and it uses that to produce this output column. So these might be the scores for how much it looks like a Satosa. And then maybe let's say these are the coefficients for a Versicolor. Then these would be the scores for a Versicolor. If uh, these were the coefficients for a Virginica, then these might be uh, the scores for the Virginica. And so what I can do is that each one of these rows corresponds to a row in my original data, which means this row corresponds to one particular flower, one particular iris. And so for that one particular iris, I have a score. How much is it like a, a Satosa? How much is it like a Versicolor? How much is it like a, um, a Virginica? And so what I can do is I can try to take these and I can see which score is the highest. And in this case, it's this middle one. So whatever, uh, whatever type of iris corresponds to that middle column is what I'd want to predict. And so I can check that. I could say, um, uh, if I go back to this, I could say, I think it's classes. Um, I could see, okay, well, this, I, I guess, I guess, well, this is the Satosa. And so that first one would be a Versicolor, right? And, and, and so one of the ways I could actually do this is um, there's a, um, it turns out that there is an ARG, um, ARGmin call. Let me just try to do this here and make sure I get it right. Uh, I am getting it right. Okay. And so what, um, or I guess I want argmax. What this is going to do is it's going to give me which index um, is basically giving me the largest value. But I have to specify what axis. And I um, zero is down and one is across. So I'm going to say one. And what is this telling me? I'm going to reshape it so it's a little bit more obvious. I'm going to say um, negative one, one. What this means is that um, at index one, I have the biggest number in that first place. The second position, the biggest number is here. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. This number is bigger than those other ones. Let me check the fourth one. That means the zeroth position is bigger. So this is bigger than these. So it's absolutely true. And so what's cool about if I have a NumPy array like this, I can put that into another NumPy um, array like this. So I can, I can take these classes and I can put this array of numbers into here. And I'm going to get basically, well, what are all these categories? And so I'm going to take all of this and, um, and I'm going to put it back in here. And I can see that then I'm going to get the predictions for all my, um, for all of my, for all of my flowers, right? I can see for each of them, well, what am I predicting it, it is, right? And this will correspond with my predictions earlier, right? So again, that product is at the heart of it. Um, but now, since I have uh, different possible classes, I have to have coefficients to get a score for each class. And so that's why um, uh, we have to multiply the data by a full matrix instead of just a vector. And that's the first example we've seen like that, uh, a real practical use case in this course.